Hello everyone. Once again, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel and you are watching Fundamental of Cyber Security. In this session, we're going to understand a very important topic. It is related to networking as well as it is related to cyber security. But for a person who is working on cyber security, this is a very important topic because there are many attack. There are many problems in, uh, in, in uh, while doing uh, a kind of vulnerability analysis and all. You will get this DNS term many a times, right? So we need to understand how exactly it is working and what exactly it is. We need to understand it, right? So very simple thing I had written down here that uh, it will translate your uh, domain name into something called as IP addresses, right? So you, uh, you can understand that uh, if there is a website like google.com, then uh, uh, it is not just the website. To handle this website, we need a server. We generally call that server as a web server. Okay, so uh, this is a domain name and this web server has an IP address, all right? So uh, to handle this complete domain, I need a web server and which has an IP address. So whenever you get a response, your actual response is coming from a web server. It just, this is just a kind of, you know, naming. Right, so actual work is done by this web server. I hope that you understand. So when I say this DNS, what exactly happens? That this is a computer. Okay, so this is a very simple fast forward computer. Your PC one. Your PC one gonna try to connect. Let's say you are going to request something. Let's say the request is for uh, maybe it is for Google. So you are saying that www.google.com. When you say this, this request comes to the a DNS server. So here this is a DNS and as I told you that it converts your uh, domain name into something called as IP address. So uh, now the request goes to the web server, correct? So now this DNS doesn't have the google.com. It is going to translate into an IP address. So let's say the IP address is 172.168.1.1. By the way, it is not, but that is okay. And then it goes to the uh, you know the the server and this is maybe this is a web server this way this is a web server okay so uh, and and uh, this is again uh, this is a forward lookup and uh, this is going to be a reverse lookup so when your web server is going to respond you back so uh, it is going to be based on IP address then DNS again going to convert it okay so DNS again going to convert into a domain name and give you the response here okay so it is going to be a google.com response so you see it is translating your domain name into ip and then again ip into domain name so this this complete process is known as forward lookup so when i say this is then it is a forward lookup and this is going to be a reverse lookup okay this both thing happens and you had seen this two terms precisely in many of the books and all now the second question that arises in everyone's mind sir why why exactly we need it right why why do we need this dns i can open that uh, website from anywhere now the need part so i'm going to put a label here that why do we need it the question is well the need is the first need is you see here you can call a website with a ip address only you cannot call uh, I mean with a domain name let's understand it that uh, it is it is going to be called by the IP address now you see that human is not capable to want to remember these many numbers so there are currently in internet there are millions and zillions of websites so you cannot remember each and every website's IP address right you cannot do like uh, go to the browser and in the URL bar you type like 172.168.10.1 it's not possible to open Google with IP Facebook.IP uh, any university with a IP, any website with IP, it's, it's really hard for a human brain to accept those numbers. So human is not good at number. This is the main problem. Is not good uh, uh, at numbers. I mean, he cannot remember like a uh, zillion numbers at a time. So brain is not functioning here. So he, he is not going to work with your IP address. I mean, so when I say numbers, it is nothing but an IP address. So I need some other mechanism, you know, so that I can remember the uh, things. So instead of IP address, let me do the characters. Okay, so they had given some characters and you had created the domain name. The second thing is, uh, the second problem is, uh, and sometimes it is uh, like, that uh, maybe this google.com is 
uh, is now on this uh, web server there might be a possibility that this google.com can be migrated to another web server there might be a possibility if this web server get crashed or maybe load balancing comes up so he could uh, you know move on to another web server here and uh, this has another ip so if you remember only this ip then uh, you need to remember this another IP too. So this is again going to be a problem, right? You do not know when this change happened, when this migration happened, you do not know. So here I'm going to write that website. This is another problem. That's why I need some domain name mechanism. So uh, web uh, website, web server, uh, get migrated. That's why I need this. Okay, so these are the two uh, need of a DNS system, that's why we have DNS here. Um, you see, <clears throat> earlier instead of this DNS system, we have a same mechanism in the form of host.txt file. If you remember this file, uh, we have earlier we have here, I'm going to put that earlier we have something called as host.txt. If you had some somehow remember in this so called host.txt, this is a host file. It is something like this. So if there is a there, there is a mapping, so something like this, 10.1 is mapped with Google.com, and there are so many <clears throat> mapping happens here. So so many websites you visit, all mappings are being given over here, and then we what basically we did here is 